Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against, uh, oh my goodness, Hartwig, I can't remember the name. <laughs> this is the May 4th, 1942 turn, and we are, I want to say a little bit over a week into our game with our new opponent. Uh, last turn, we had a couple of Mark 14s, I believe, that worked against some Japanese shipping. This turn doesn't look like our S24 uh, hit with torpedoes. Granted, not Mark 14s, but still doesn't look like it hit with its torpedoes. Uh, so maybe we won't be quite as lucky. Something just exploded in the, in the sound effects. I'm not sure where that came from. Meanwhile, the SS Haddock, who I believe was the sub who hit with its torpedoes yesterday, fires a couple of fish and misses. Um, not a lot of stuff going on here. Japanese uh, cruisers continue to bombard at Batavia here on the Dutch East Indies. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, fast forward through that. Looks like 163 casualties. It seems like their bombardments are getting more effective. They're doing a fair bit of damage to the infrastructure ashore. Some battleships are returning here as well. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're doing damage to uh, our troops there, and they're also doing damage to the infrastructure. My understanding is most of the damage seems to be limited to some engineer units, so I think that's good at least. Uh, meanwhile, we are landing troops on Midway today here. You can see the first landing had just a couple of squads disabled, none destroyed. Second landing here, 11 squads disabled. That seems like a fair bit of disabled squads here um, based on uh, what I was kind of expecting. Um, but we've got three separate battalions, essentially, basically one full regiment minus some heavy equipment landing on midway this turn. At least that's the plan. Uh, one squad destroyed there in that most recent landing there. This is all in the pre-AM or pre-sunrise phase. Um, but yeah, it's Hartwig, Jet. It's Hartwig. I just, this is like our fourth opponent. So of course, start to lose track at some point. Um, okay, have ever thought of running for political office? Why would I do that to myself, Reddy? Um, yes, I have thought about it. I don't think I'd be any good at the whole whining and dining piece, but, you know, I have thought of it. Um, okay. Not a good enough networker at work, let alone, uh, you know, in the political sphere. So, all right, so we're continuing to land troops at Midway. Looks like also some Japanese submarines are, are uh, firing torpedoes. I don't know if it's not really at our landing force. They're firing torpedoes at some of our uh, destroyer minesweepers here, uh, which is nice because those guys are basically destroyers from an ASW perspective. Uh, the I-2 there took one hit. Uh, that's actually the task force that the battleships were in. I believe we were telling them to return back to Midway. Uh, because they were out of ammo and I didn't want to keep them around midway too much longer. It didn't seem like there was much point in continuing to bombard as we were landing, um, but we'll see. Okay, so troops landing at midway. We already have the troops ashore at Savi, remember? We took the base, but the Japanese troops there still exist. Uh, and then we also saw Japanese bombardments at Batavia. Meanwhile, we've got a couple of uh, aircraft here fighting against Japanese bombers coming into Batavia here. It looks like two uh, interceptors are going after these Sallies. Maybe we got one of them. Looks like we claimed one Sally destroyed and six damaged. I'm not sure if that was by flak or by our fighters. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some Japanese bombing in China. Remember, I think was last turn the one where we had the Dutch pilot who got three kills all by himself after surviving 20... Uh, 20 Japanese uh, fighters uh, sweeping over Batavia. A freaking hero. Okay, a lot of bombing in uh, the Philippines here where our troops are starting to starve out. Oh, we've got a big air battle over Rangoon going here. So 12 Japanese Oscars and 7 Sally bombers going for the port at Rangoon, or at least the base of Rangoon. We've got 22 Warhawks, 4 Kitty Hawks, 8 Hurricane, or actually 17 Hurricanes. Another eight Kitty Hawk 1As and 15 P-38 Lightnings intercepting the Japanese here. Pretty big air battle, at least on the Allied side, uh, trying to ambush the Japanese fighters flying over Rangoon. So these guys are flying out of Bangkok with their bombers, a small fighter force of about 12 Oscars escorting, and we have a considerable advantage in terms of our uh, number of aircraft airborne. Now, our cap was layered, so we had, I want to say our... Hurricanes who had the lowest experience of any of the groups. Ah, we lost a Warhawk there. I want to say our kitty, our hurricanes were flying at 5,000 feet. 
our war honks at 15 and our lightnings at like 37,000 feet. So we had a layered cap. Basically, the idea is you draw the Japanese aircraft down to an altitude at which you can fight at more equal footing because the Japanese do have maneuver advantages, especially at higher altitudes against the Warhawks. The Hurricanes have good higher altitude maneuverability, but the pilots are not very good. And so the Japanese experienced pilots would fare well against them. And so you put those at lower altitude, draws everybody down to a better altitude for your own fighters. But then we also have the P-38s, which have an altitude advantage over the Japanese. So if all of that fails, then they can dive on the Japanese fighters and make mincemeat of them with their speed and altitude advantage. So we are going to try and chew up this Japanese uh, task force, or not task force, but Japanese raid here. Looks like about four bombers made it through. One just got hit by flak there. Four fighters made it through as well. According to this, we lost one P-40 Warhawk. The enemy lost two Sallies, actually three Sallies, one by Flak, and three Oscars. So six aircraft to one. I will take that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Is that a dated reference? I don't know. Probably. Meanwhile, our bombers are continuing to hit uh, Midway Island from our carrier, the USS Hornet, which is our sole aircraft carrier screening the invasion there. Uh, so you can see they dropped on the Japanese after our troops are ashore. We took one damaged uh, Dauntless from Flak, and we inflicted 49 casualties on the Japanese, including an infantry squad uh, being destroyed. Dang, you old. Yeah, I am, Scounzi. I was uh, I was talking to my boss at work the other day, and he was talking about his daughter who's in high school basketball. And I was talking about I played high school basketball. And he was talking about how, you know, AAU and how things have changed. And I'm like... Well, I feel like I played, you know, I wasn't, I haven't been out of high school that long and, you know, it wasn't quite like that. And he's like, how long ago were you in high school? And I did the math and it's been 16 years and now I feel really old. All right. Another Dauntless raid coming in. <laughs> 16 more coming in on the Japanese there. No damage. Doesn't look like maybe some fatigue or uh, whatever. Uh, and then we've got some of our land-based bombers flying out of Pago Pago uh, hitting Savi. Uh, doing a little bit of damage to the Japanese troops there, which have been pushed off the base. These guys are coming in a bit scattered. A little bit of damage here, but not a lot. I still don't think I'm old, Grunt. Still don't think it. I'm I'm just barely entering middle age. That's That's my... You thought I was older than that? Graduated high school in 06, Brass. Well, thanks, Warlord. <laughs> uh, all right. I've probably said this on stream more than once, but I was actually going to Latin class. I was, or no, I was going from Latin class in eighth grade to um, English class when uh, the, the Twin Towers were hit. That's when I heard about it. All right, so we've got one P-40 Warhawk that just got destroyed by the Japanese here over Batavia. I'm really hoping that it's not that, that Dutch pilot who got seven kills the other day. Hopefully he was too tired to fly because it would really suck if we lost him after that heroic effort he had from a few days ago. Okay. All right, so Japanese are really hitting Batavia pretty hard this turn. Okay. All right, so I think that about does it for the air phase. We've got our heavy cruisers bombarding midway as well. Some eight inch guns coming in on some American heavies. These guys did reload at Curry. They did, uh, the cruisers had enough ops points to reload and fall back. So we did, we did decide to keep, I wanna say like six heavy cruisers in and around midway to support the landings there. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can see 400, and that was a good decision there. 422 Japanese casualties inflicted. Not a lot of destroyed stuff, although the non-combatants suffered. Uh, but that really blitzed up the defenders there with all those eight-inch shells falling amongst them. And then our uh, second battalion coming ashore here, about seven squads either destroyed or disabled. And I want to say either a third battalion is coming ashore maybe now and another 68 casualties here. 
You were negative one like a G-man. Well, you're a youngster. I was 14. All right. So I have a, a picture in my office, actually, of the Twin Towers. My wife, obviously we weren't married at the time, uh, was uh, traveling to New York to visit her sister. And she was supposed to be there the weekend of 9-11. They were going to go up on the Twin Towers or whatnot. But I forget exactly what was going on. Something happened. She had to cancel her trip, and she went the week before. So she took a picture of the, of the towers the week before they were destroyed. And so that's in my office. My, uh, my wife's sister had her apartment, which was not like a big apartment building. It was a walk-up. Uh, destroyed when they all came down. All right, so... A lot of bombardment stuff going on on the Philipp on the Philippine Islands. Shock attack at Midway. We've got our three battalions. Yeah, we took it. All right, Midway Falls. All right, so it looks like we got 2,400 troops ashore against only 897 defenders. We only had 11 guns. We got 20. 46 to 25 in terms of assault value, but when the calculations are drawn we got a 14 to 1 advantage there so we took the island without even reducing the forts took the base instantly we did lose a few casualties but the japanese lost more 37 infantry squads destroyed uh and uh that's a good result there that is a better result than i had been anticipating i thought things were going to be closer and they certainly could have been closer you can see 46 to 25 there's no reason that initially with a 46 to 25 we would have for sure gotten a 14 to 1 we got a 14 to 1 because the Allied troops, when they're landing, are forced to do a shock attack, at least in certain circumstances. I think on an atoll, you have to do a shock attack. Now, a shock attack can do one of two things. It can either cause you to get much better dice rolls or a higher adjusted assault value and the enemy a lower one, or it can do the reverse where your odds get fucked. In our case, it looks like it did good for us, 14 to 1. It also almost certainly helped for the fact that we've been bombarding them for a while. We've been hitting their supply. So you can see here the combat modifiers. Japanese leaders on these units, bad. Japanese were heavily disrupted from all the bombardments. They were not experienced soldiers, and they had bad supply. Meanwhile, we got a plus modifier for shock. So they had everything working against them, and we got one thing working for us. So good result. Midway Falls, it is now in the Allied hands again. Shock attack at Savi as well. Um, or actually, deliberate attack we've been doing there. We got 97 to 1 odds, 111 to 1 assault value, and the enemy unit there was destroyed. So 1,193 Japanese soldiers are either killed or captured on Savi, and I believe that island is now totally clear for the Allied forces. Hey, Army Vet. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Well, like a G-Man, you, uh, you and Sean Mack are just the youngsters in the chat here, huh? All right, so that was a good turn. Um, we had an ambush of Japanese aircraft. We're not quite sure how effective yet, but we'll take a look at it in a moment. Over Rangoon. We destroyed the Japanese troops, which had already been pushed off the base at Savi, and we pushed the Japanese troops on midway out of the base, and presumably we'll finish them off in the next couple of days. So if we go ahead and we take a look at the actual uh, turn. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Take a look. Blah, blah, blah. Too far east. Midway. It's now American again. Hell yeah, brothers. So we got Midway. It is ours. <laughs> but uh, uh, those, like that week of battleship bombardments was not very friendly to the port and airfield facilities. 100, 197% damage. Uh, almost no supply ashore yet either. Uh, we are still unloading. We've got another, what, 1,300, 1,400 supply between these three amphibious task forces. Most of our troops are ashore, but it's a matter of getting the supplies ashore and some of the base force troops ashore. Uh, but you can see here we need more supply probably to be able to uh, effectively reduce the remaining 1,200 enemy troops on the island. Uh, our own troops here. Actually, it looks like the troops for the most part, other than the first 298th, have sufficient supplies. So these guys' supplies are low. 13 out of 23 squads are ready to fight. The second 298th has 6 out of 12 squads ready to fight. Um, and the uh, disruption is high. So I'm wondering if maybe we have them stand down for a turn because, wow, 22 out of uh, 29 squads are disabled. Uh, those are some, although the disruption's not very high, those are some pretty high 
uh, figures across the board. So we may want to hold off for one more turn while those guys get ashore. It's not likely the Japanese are going to be able to get any stronger, especially without holding the base. Uh, but you can see here that we've got uh, we've got a goddamn uh, we've we've retaken Midway. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say, but we've retaken Midway. At that point, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to pull the Hornet back. I am going to try and maybe see if we can get one more airstrike on our way out against the Japanese defenders, uh, but then we're going to move east. We are also going to start pulling our assets out of Curry Island because that's too far forward. I don't have any way to defend it if the Japanese fleet does come by and try to hit us. So we're going to pull the Neosho and the Mauna Loa, uh, the uh, ammunition ship and the uh, fleet oiler out. They both make 16 knots, so we're going to move them west first, and then we're going to move them east down toward Pearl. Japanese submarines in and around the Midway Island area, so we're going to swing these guys wide west and then east to avoid that. We also have a number of our ammunition carriers here, which are only here to support the battleship bombardments, which are also going to move east, or sorry, west and then east. And then uh, the battleships are already withdrawing, so not these guys. Uh, but the battleships, where are they? They've already pulled, I think, mostly to safety. We'll see. I don't want to jinx anything here, but the battleships are already halfway back uh, between Midway and Pearl, uh, and they are low on ammunition, but, or at least some of them are low on ammunition. I think. Those are destroyers. Yeah, these guys are low on 15-inch ammo, 14-inch ammo. Who had that full... I must have been looking at their 5-inch ammo complement. But yeah, you can see the battleships are pulling back to Pearl as well. Uh, so uh, the midway operation is in the in process, but hopefully it'll be a success. Savi is fully reduced now. We've got the uh, 8th Marines ashore. I think there's a few support elements for the Marines still coming ashore. I'm guessing these are mostly support and motorized support units that haven't unloaded yet. They are exclusively support and motorized support, but the rest of the regiment is a short Savi, which is also not in good shape because we've been bombarding Savi and bombing Savi for quite a while. Uh, so you can see 60s and 50s of damage on the base there. Um, we will probably, I would like to get Savi's airfield built out a little bit because Savi is 16 hexes from Canton. 16 hexes from Canton is close enough that we can do extended range B-17 strikes or at least get some reconnaissance out there uh, from some of our, I want to say PBYs. Yeah, these guys have normal radius of 16. So we can get pretty good reconnaissance over Canton. I would like to retake Canton. I don't really want to go island by island all the way back into Japan, but what I do want to do is take Canton so we can really solidify our uh, strategic lines of communication between, between Pearl, which is up here, and our easternmost, or I guess westernmost bases on the Fiji line here to the east of New Caledonia. And right now we've got to take a bit of a detour for any kind of travel because Canton could have float planes. If we can retake Canton easily, that would be great. And then we really won't have to worry about any Japanese interdiction of our supply lines, at least until you get into the New Hebrides, New Caledonia area. And at that last moment, we can swing them way south. So that is, uh, that is something that uh, I would like to do um so canton for strategic reasons should be something that we would retake if we can and by taking uh by taking savi it gives us a base that is much closer even than wallace island which is 18 hexes away it is inside just barely inside the range of normal radius for pbys and extended range for b17s so uh, that's going to be useful staging area that we hadn't had before now that that base fell Meanwhile, we also did fight an air battle over Rangoon, and we fought it successfully. I did pull those fighter units back uh, for reasons. Uh, you can see since the last turn, he has flooded 81 fighters into Bangkok. He has flooded 70 fighters into Chiang Mai. So I'm assuming he's going to sweep over Rangoon in force with 150 plus fighters. We had about 170 fighters there at the time, so I pulled most of them back uh, to either Chittagong. Uh, you can see here are the P-40s, the P-38s are all here, uh, or to Calcutta, where we pulled the uh, Hurricanes back. Um, but if we take a look at the actual results here, uh, we claimed pretty good results here today. Uh, 18 Japanese aircraft lost to seven uh, Allied aircraft. This is, uh, fog of war does apply, so we could be wrong. But we claimed five air-to-air -air kills of KI-43-1C Oscars, seven total aircraft destroyed, with two uh, being destroyed in ops losses. We also claimed three KI-21-2A Sallies in air-to-air -air combat, one KI-21-1 Sally, 
uh, as well as some additional operational losses there for the Japanese. A couple of Lily's Babs. We did lose two Kitty Hawks, both operationally, so they were damaged in the air battle and then crashed on landing. We lost one P-40E in both the U.S. Army Air Force and also one in the Dutch Air Force. And then we lost a Hurricane 2B and two A Trops, both to ops losses. If we go into the pilot losses section here, we did not lose a single pilot killed. So good news for us. Our Dutch pilot, who is our highest scoring ace right now of anyone who's alive, we had T. Cole, but he was killed a while back. Um, we have Van Harlem of the Dutch Air Force or whatever uh, with seven kills tied with B.D. Wagner, C.H. Older, uh, and uh, G. Boynton, that is Pappy Boynton of uh, the Black Sheep fame, all with seven kills here. Um, most of these guys, some of these guys still say H-81s. I'm guessing Boynton is no longer with the squadron because the AVG-1 section is flying P-38s, so... Oh, no, he's still in command. I'm not sure why it says maybe he doesn't have any kills yet as a P-38 pilot. I'm not sure why it would say that. But, yeah, that group with, has two aces of seven kills each. Uh, Boynton and Wagner, both with seven kills in the P-38 squadron. So not sure about that one. Um, but, yeah, great news. I mean, we lost seven planes, but we only lost one pilot wounded in action. Nobody killed in action. Nobody missing in action. So that is a pretty damn good turn. You can assume the Japanese lost a lot more pilots than that because of all the air-to-air, -air, any planes that were shot down over Rangoon were shot down over hostile territory for the Japanese. So you got to assume they at least have seven crews that are either KIA or MIA, um, and the MIA could turn to capture or could... I guess supposedly at some point be reunited with the Japanese, especially if they drive into Rangoon. Uh, but it was a it was a good good show, boys. A uh, good good result for us uh, in that uh, in that fight. So I don't know if we had any new aces. I wasn't really checking to see if anybody was a new ace. I think actually, does the operations show that? No. Uh, combat reports. Operations might actually. So we're scrolling down. And so Captain DeVers was credited with kill number three, kill number two, kill number three. I don't see anyone becoming an ace today. So now some of those confirmed kills, I think sometimes can trickle in later, but I don't see anyone achieving ace status today. So... Um, all right, so that's a good result. Ship sunk. Did anything sink last turn? No, supposedly. I think I heard some gurgles, so maybe some stuff was sunk, but nothing was claimed. Um, yeah, so with that being said, we did pull back from Rangoon. I am expecting a large scale enemy sweep over there. If they do bomb the base, we do only have 20 aircraft there. And the majority of them are Catalinas and Hurricane Photo Recon. Photo Recon is good and important and all that jazz, but anyway. I also did pull the B-17s. We had about 30 B-17s at Mandalay. I pulled them, I want to say, into Chittagong, a little bit further away. I think technically might still be in range uh, from Japanese bases. Certainly bases at Chiang Mai, it's only 12 away. Um, and uh, Rangoon or Bangkok's about 21 away. But I don't think they're going to be launching any major air raids out of Chiang Mai. Only 30 bombers there. Um, so I don't think we've got to worry about that. I am standing these fighter groups down because by transferring them, we really did bump up their... Uh, fatigue levels here you can see a lot of these pilots gained some experience from the last turn you can see all the green icons here represent experience gained last turn i wish i would show you a green icon for kills gained last turn that would be kind of a cool stat to have but you can see here quite a bit of experience gained in this last turn some of them not really relevant to the turn that was fought blenheims who are training you can see they're gaining bombing experience because they're training to bomb um and then hudson's doing the same uh, but then if we get back to some of the fighter groups, I want to say the P-40s, the P-38s, uh, looks like Neil R.H. gained some experience. Uh, I guess that's about it. Most of these guys are super experienced in the uh, AVG group here. The P-40 pilots gained a little bit more, uh, and the uh, second P-40 group did very well in terms of gaining experience this last turn. Quite a bit of green here on this group. Um, and then the uh, Hurricanes flew out to uh, Calcutta, so that's where they're getting out to... Um, I would imagine the Hurricane groups did a little bit better experience-wise because they're pretty 
underexperienced to begin with. So if we filter by uh, by aircraft type, we can we can see experience gains more efficiently here. So these guys were, I think they're hurricane. This group might've been training, but you can see here some air experience and some whatnot gained. We also are building a massive fighter squadron at Calcutta of F4F Wildcats for the Marines. Right now they're just training, but they've got 61 aircraft with six more uh, being repaired over the next day or so. So they will be up to 67 aircraft with another six they can draw from the pool. We can make these guys up to 102 aircraft squadron. That's putting a lot of eggs in one basket, but certainly is a, is a large uh, training pool. If we want to train these guys, you can see they're gaining some strafing and defense experience, uh, which they get from the type of training we're putting them on. Um, in terms of... Oh, sorry about that, like a G-man. Um, in terms of anything else worthwhile checking out, I'm trying to see here. So, photo recon pilots are expendable, but they're kind of expendable. <laughs> huh. All right. Sorry, uh, Atar. Anyway, um, I didn't click the button. I think I might have accidentally set some scheduled stuff up, and we just hit the one-hour mark, so that's probably why. Uh, I should have done a pre-roll at the start and then you wouldn't have gotten that. But anyway, um, I could have run ads while I was ranting about streaming. That would have been perfect, right? Can I pull out the Dutch pilot like a G-Man? Let's take a look. So he's flying P-40s. We have two P-40s ready now. He has very little fatigue, so he will probably fall, fly tomorrow. Where would we send him to? The reserve? Group reserve? Is it group reserve? I'm not really sure. I don't, I, I generally let Vulcan handle most of my pilot management. So I don't know what with the group reserve, what would that, what's the difference between the group reserve and the reserve? Well, they're both group reserve. Uh, does anybody know? Should I pull Van Harlem out? And if so, where do we send him to? There's no tri track com like the Japanese have. Yeah, I can, and that's on me. I need to pay more attention to that. I could make the timing better if I was cognizant of what I was doing. But when you get it set up on a schedule, sometimes you miss things. Nobody knows. I'll do it off screen once I, uh, once I figure that out. I do think we can pull him out, though. Um, I'm pretty sure we've already e brought in TH Funman as a replacement and he'll be arriving in one day. So I'll have to see if we can pull Van Harlem out or we could just let it ride. You know, we could just keep him flying. There's two P40s, low experience, uh, low fatigue, high experience. Uh, he could definitely maybe pull off another stunner and shoot down another three enemy sallies. And, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it is certainly possible. And then, you know, he'd be an absolute double ace hero, all-star that, uh, no, really he'd probably die <laughs> flying in a P40 outnumbered 21 against Japanese zeros. You're going to die, buddy. Like you got lucky. You probably ducked into like a storm cloud or something like that. But you got to know anybody who's going up over Batavia right now is like just going to die. Uh, meanwhile, the supply at Batavia is about 37,000, so still quite a bit. Um, army strength is still at about almost 1,000 AV. Um, the troops that we have here, the 4th KNL Regiment, um, 52 experience, 98 morale, low fatigue, low disruption. It seems like the fatigue and the disruption on most of these units is pretty damn low. I'm really surprised by that. Um, we do have, it looks like the... Barisian Canal Regiment Infantry Unit here has high experience, or no, that's experience. I, I I crossed, I looked at it wrong. So yeah, almost no disruption or fatigue on any of these units we're scrolling through here. Some disruption on this Base Force unit, another Base Force unit. So it looks like most of the disruption that their battleships and cruisers are causing is limited to the engineer units. This coastal gun unit has very high disruption. 
I don't know how how much they really help in the defense. They do have about 50 infantry squads, but they're militia. Makes sense that uh, after a lot of bo bo bombardments, though, the coastal guns would not be in great shape. AA battalion's not in great shape. But other than that, it's like engineers and coastal guns. Everybody else is doing just fine. So that's good, um, especially since the Japanese have considerably more firepower here than we do, despite having a lot more men. Um, what are you guys arguing about over there? No way he's a national hero. Don't you dare. He belongs training the next crop. Sean Mack, the next crop of what? Holland is being occupied by the Nazis. Where is he going to train anybody? You really think they're going to send him to America to train American pilots? You think American pilots are going to be like, oh, yeah, this, this pilot of another nation knows what's up? Mm. Dutch Ghana. It's been occupied by the Nazis for a long time by this point. Yeah. Going on uh, two years almost, right? Aruba, Bahama, come up here. Um, meanwhile, our troops in the Philippines, they, did they retake Clark Field this turn? Oh, no, we never took it. We never took it back from them, right? So we're still at about 1,500 assault value. A fifth of our entire strength is in one division, the 2nd Filipino Army Constabulary Division. Oh, the supply is so bad. They have 186. They need 708. We are very close to being overrun there. Very close to being overrun. Supply in these units is less than 50% required. If he attacks, he hasn't attacked yet. You got to assume he knows the game well enough to know that we are going to be pushovers when he does. I mean, the real hope here is that he attacks it causes him to pause, causes him to use up some fuel, some supplies, some other things like that. He drives us back into Bataan, and he's got to do it all over again, and it's a more expensive and time-consuming a, a logistical hurdle. But yeah, we're going to start starving out there. We didn't really look at a lot of other things. I mean, we looked at Burma, we looked at uh, the Dutch East Indies and the counterattacks at Savi and Midway. Not anything going on in China is far as i can tell no major moves there troops here dig it in they're at level two and one fourths here in this rough terrain to the east of quilin quilin is closing in on level four forts they're 92 percent they don't have a lot of engineers there so it's going to take a little bit of time but they're very close to level four forts and then we're working on building up fortifications all along this southern uh, advance toward chungking uh, we also are at level five forts working toward level six at Chiki Kong, um, which would be pretty freaking awesome to have level six forts in two places in China in central China and also uh, at Chongqing. Uh, I would also love to get uh, Kino forts up. Uh, it's a rough hex. So before things open up toward Chongqing, this would be a really important hex to try and stop them at. So we're at level two, working toward four with a decent amount of engineers, 85. I haven't started building level six forts at Chongqing because we didn't have enough supply. I think you have to have at least 20,000 supply to expand a six to a seven. And so I hadn't ordered that. We have 100 engineers at Chongqing. From what I've been told, it is incredibly expensive. Every, every fort that you build above six uses a ton of supply. And so that's not something we really have a a lot to throw around in China, so I haven't started building these forts yet. But it is tempting to try and turn Chongqing into an Iwo Jima or something. Uh, meanwhile, the carrier situation here, we still have our carriers at Bombay. Uh, we did start upgrading, I want to say, the heavy cruiser Minneapolis is going to be upgrading its, uh, its upgrade for the next 20 days. We also have a uh, few carriers in the Bombay area, but none are are small enough to be refitted. We need at least a 35,000 ton dry dock, and Bombay has a 20,000 ton dry dock, which is not big enough for the 
Saratoga and Lexington. It is big enough for the Enterprise in the Yorktown. The problem with the Enterprise in the Yorktown is they don't have an upgrade for a couple more months. Um, so I'm not sure really what to do with my carriers at this point. We are moving another British carrier here, the illustrious toward, uh, toward India. It's going to be on map in seven days and it has the battle cruiser repulse with it. You know, I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that it is likely, uh, that the Japanese main effort in this game will have to flow through Burma. I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think the Japanese can afford to leave Rangoon in their rear uh, because once we get longer range bombers like the the b-29 in 1943 uh, we will definitely be able to bomb sabang we might even be able to hit it with b-24s what's the uh well that's the ship database uh vehicle allied aircraft what is the b-24 range B-24D Liberator, normal radius of 17, extended radius of 21. So the standard B-24 can hit Sabang from Rangoon, and it can hit, was it 21? I think it said 21. So it can't hit from Rangoon. From Mulman, it can hit Maiden. And Maiden makes 200 oil per turn. So if they don't take Mulman... We could put B-24s and hit Meaden. We could take Sabang. Uh, we could bomb Langsha. Uh, but really, the key is Meaden. We could bomb Meaden. Um, we could... Could What else could we bomb from, uh, from Mole Mine? We could bomb Bangkok, which has oil refineries. Not many. Uh, we could bomb all of... Vietnam. Hell, we could even get close to hitting Hong Kong. Um, not quite, though. But we could bomb all of Southeast Asia, pretty much, um, and then uh, big chunks of oil-producing facilities in the Dutch East Indies. So he really needs to take, at least needs to push us back past Mole Mine, probably Rangoon as well, in order to feel comfortable. And once the B-29s come online in 43... All bets are off. I mean, we could probably hit down as far as Palembang, I think, maybe. What's the range on the B-24 or B-29? Uh, I was clicking the wrong button there. B-29 Super Fortress, give me a range. 28 hexes on normal, 35 on extended. So, out of Rangoon... We could hit from Mole Mine. We could hit, well, we couldn't quite hit Palembang, but we could hit all the, everything north of Palembang. Um, and there's, there's a fair bit of oil production. Bengalis, 41, Meaden, 200, Demjabi, 250. And then obviously Singapore, Bangkok could even hit Clark Field. We could even hit the Philippines. So he has to take Burma, not for the next six months, but once we're beyond that, he, he has to strategically take Burma or at least reduce it to the point where we can't base anything out of there and have complete control of the air so that we can't start pushing back there. So my assumption is he's going to drive in toward Burma. Maybe not right away, but at some point, which makes me think, think we should leave the carriers in the Indian theater uh, because then they could help counter that and support the land-based air. The problem is I don't want to just like leave them sitting out here indefinitely. That removes them from doing anything in the Pacific and really joining any sort of counterattacks anywhere else toward New Caledonia, toward supporting Australia, they really are kind of out on an island in, in at India by themselves. So I'm kind of inclined to take the American carriers and move them back toward the American West Coast, join up with the Hornet at Pearl, by which time the Wasp will probably be online as well, and then use them either in Australia or the Central or South Pacific. I think that is what we will do, but I haven't made up my mind. We'll probably wait a few days as I kind of work through that and this is the Minnesota upgrades. 
But I'm interested in hearing what you all say and whether you guys think that would be a, a sound idea or not. I'm not sure I have a lot else to show you guys this turn. Nothing really dramatic has changed from ship availability. Um, we've got some cargo ships that have come available. We've got the Long Island in about two weeks. Uh, in terms of uh, ground units, not a lot has changed. So I think that's about it for the turn. I don't know if there's anything worthwhile looking on SIGINT. Uh, so an infantry regiment's planning for an attack on Cyan. That's not really news. Yeah, not a lot here. So with that being said, everyone, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Episode number 152. We successfully retook Midway and pushed the Japanese defenders into a corner of the island. We wiped out the Japanese defenders on Savi Island, and we am ambushed the Japanese fighters over Rangoon. Overall, a good turn for the Allies, although nothing decisive yet, uh, but uh, it's a positive development. With that being said, that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and please leave your thoughts down below as always. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.